One of the best new things in Maya 2018 is the introduction of Dynamics to Mesh. Let's have a look how it works. I've cleared the scene and created a small polygon cube and from that I will now create a mesh network to go on with the dynamics. So instead of the linear layout here in the, in the distribute node, I'm going to switch to grid and set up a grid of 10 by 10 by 10 cubes. And with that, I will simply turn on or create a dynamics node in mesh that will instantly make the whole thing dynamic. You see that it has created an underground or a ground plane, which comes from the bullet solver that is in use here. And when I hit play now, you see that all the cubes are dynamic and collide with the ground. Everything is fine. So what else can we do with that? In the example that I've shown, the whole cube of cubes was tilted a little bit, was rotated. I can do that here by using a transform node. The transform actually is supposed to, to work before the dynamics. So I'm going to take it and drag it down so that it happens before the dynamics reading from the bottom here. I could now use these values here to rotate the whole object accordingly, but I can also right click into this field here and create a little helper that allows me to, that allows me to rotate this thing freely and use this as the starting point. So now when I hit play, you see that it takes the cubes from there and collides them with the ground. Another thing was the color. That's an easy one. I simply create a color node here and also I'm going to drag it down. So because I want this to happen before the transform actually, and I will create maybe a, a crater node or so and set it up accordingly. Okay. So here's our cube, a colored cube. Now what's with the underground? Um, in this example here, we don't need a separate underground. I can create one for display purposes. I just scale up a polygon plane and move it down by minus 20, which is the setting when you look here in the bullet solver, which is the setting of the built-in ground plane. So here is minus 20 is down from the from the origin. We also have a normal gravity here that I could bump up to make this whole thing look a little bit smaller. And something else that we had in the original scene was additional collision objects. So let me create some of these collision objects and place them on the ground like so and now I would have to register these objects as these objects as collision objects here in the bullet solver under collider objects so I'm simply using middle mouse drag and drop to drag all these objects into this section here and now they can collide with all of these little cubes let me play that everything's fine to get a little bit more shadow I can turn on the ambient occlusion setting here so you see, it's pretty easy to set up, but there are more features that you can use. For example, when we look at the dynamics node here in the mesh, you see that we have features like initially sleeping. That means that all these objects are not dynamic at the beginning, only when they, when they are touched by something else. But there's also another way of doing that. Down here, you see a per points adjustment which means that you can drop objects and rules that help you set the values for individual points in the mesh simulation so that you could set the activity flat for each individual point depending on an influence object, for example. Let's, let's do that. So I'm right mouse button in this section here and create a new per point adjustment. And to get to the settings, I just double click. And you see here is the channel name that I want to influence. And this example here should be active. And by default, we're starting from a value of zero and we want to turn this into a value of one. So you have a minimum and maximum for us. It's just a, it's, it is just a, a switch so that I um, set minimum and maximum to the same thing. So where does that happen? By default, we could do a random setting, but in this case, I want to create a fall of object that does that whole thing. And now when I set it like this, you see that these cubes that are in the fall of object start to simulate immediately and all the other cubes will not because they are not yet active. They are at the start value outside of this influence object, so they don't simulate. 
And I can even do that interactively when I use the so-called interactive playback that you will find on the FX shell. So with interactive playback, I can take this influence object and move it into the object. And you see, when I move it away from here, the object stops simulating because it's, you know, the the influence or the change in the attribute happens where the uh, at their original position. So when I when I put the influence object back in, you see that these objects start to simulate again. So I can dissolve this whole thing here by doing this. And when I move it away, they stop simulating. Another way would be, let me rewind that. Another possibility would be to say this random object here, this influence object, instead of the mode normal, I'd switch it to the mode add which will then turn on the activity and leave it there. So it simply adds activity to these objects. Let's try it out with the interactive playback. I take the object and move it in. And now these objects, once they are active, they remain active and I can, you know, play around with it and dissolve them like this one here. So that's an interesting fact that you can influence all of the properties of the individual points by influence objects or randomness or other rules to make the whole dynamics simulation more controllable. Let's have a look at another example. So let me create a uh, piece of text here with my 3D text tool and 3D type. I'm going to turn it into, let's say, an Autodesk like so. And I want to turn this into a dynamic simulation. The, I don't need to go into the mesh editor for that. It's simply so that in the mesh pull-down menu, you will find under dynamics, add shell dynamics, which will take this object here and turn it into a mesh dynamic object. So from now on, when I, when I hit play, you will see that the Autodesk becomes simulated is a is a dynamic object already and in the mesh editor we find this dynamic objects of course and i also find a bullet solver here where i can change the gravity for example to minus 30 to make this look a little bit smaller so that it falls a bit faster now what can we do with these letters here i can set up something where you know, one object hits these Autodesk letters and then they become active. In order to do that, I will go to the Dynamics section here and tell these objects that they are initially sleeping. So by default, they are not moving when I hit play. They will only move when they are touched by another object. Now, let me set that up by simply creating a small cube and then create another mesh network. And instead of the distribute node, are we gonna use the distribute node? And I will, you know, turn down this distance here so that they all appear in the same in the same spot. And I will then animate the number of points. So at frame one, it's gonna be zero. And at frame, let's say 120, it's gonna be 60 points here. So every two seconds, we get a new point or get a new little cube that comes out of there. From the distribute node, I can use a random node to make them a little bit more, make the whole thing a little bit more interesting. And you can see from here that these cubes, you know, appear in random positions. They are not yet dynamic. We can do that. But first, before I start to do that, I'm going to create a transform node and a control object for the transform node so that I can move this whole thing around. So I'm going to take this object here, move it up a little bit, and I will animate the whole thing across this Autodesk Word here. So I'm going to set a keyframe here for frame number one. I'm going to set a keyframe and then for frame 120, I'm going to be back here, something like so. Set a keyframe so that this whole thing while these objects appear is moving around. And then after the animation is set, I'm going to turn this into a dynamics object by just creating this dynamics node here. And then when I hit play, you see that all these objects appear. And as soon as they appear, as soon as the points appear, they will drop to the ground. So how can we make it? How can we make these cubes shoot towards the Autodesk word here? And that is relatively simple in the dynamic settings. You will find 
an initial velocity. So initial velocity in this case here, we can try a minus 200 in Z in the Z direction so that they shoot. And you see, as soon as they hit these letters here, maybe minus 200 is a little bit too much, minus 100 maybe might be better. Even that is too much, minus 50. You get the idea. So I'm I'm basically shooting with these letters here. I'm shooting at the Autodesk letters. And as soon as they collide with something, they become active objects. Now let's have a look at another example. Now I've set up a bunch of cubes here, but with a little bit more space in between. And I'm going to turn this into a dynamic simulation. And let's have a look how that works. Okay, so it's dynamic and it collides with the ground. So I want to introduce something new and that is the constraints. So here under per point adjustments, you will find the so-called constraints. Constraints are lines between the different points which tie them together and hold them together like glue. So we can create such a constraint that by default, and I double click on it, by default you see the type is set to glue and these points are now glued together and let me simulate the whole thing and you see now it is one yeah maybe not a solid object but it's something that is stiffened with all these constraints the constraints can be breakable with an adjustable force so next time i simulate the whole thing you see that the depending on the force some of the constraints, if not most of the constraints, are breaking, but some others remain intact and keep these points together because the force was not big enough. I can also set this to be springs, for example. And of course, I can find just how these objects are constrained together. So by setting these distances here, I can set a maximum number of constraints. And by that, you know, find just the whole behavior of these things. So let me load an example of these springs here. This is an example where we have an emitter, which is a distribute node with an animated number of points. And this emitter spits out points and they are then immediately connected with glue constraints with a certain stiffness. And by that they form a more or less stiff objects with which is emitted or created out of nowhere. So that's a very interesting effect here. So you see that the dynamics in MASH gives you a lot of flexibility to simulate and to create things that you, that you can't create otherwise. So it combines the flexibility of the MASH motion graphics with a dynamic system.